All right, everybody, it's Friday morning. Uh, Ryan's gonna take me to the airport, but uh, we have another project that's going on that needs to be taken to the powder coating place that we go out to in Salt Lake. And we need a couple trips taken to that powder coat. So he's gonna take me to the airport today and drop off 10 of these steel canopies to the powder coat place. And then when he comes and gets me from the airport next Friday, he's going to bring out another set of 10 canopies. Uh, that way we can get some canopies dropped off at the same time we're, we're doing the trip anyway for the airport. Uh, so Ryan and I will be traveling about three hours to where we're going to be dropping off the canopies. And then he's going to drop me off at the airport. And then he's going to go look at a job out there and, and return home and run the place while I'm over in Atlanta. So uh, here's our load. We've got, got the 10 canopies. We've got the, uh, got the truck loaded up and it's about a three hour drive from Vernal, Utah to uh, the Orem, Utah and then Salt Lake City, Utah. And then to Atlanta. Um, Grandpa, I talked to him last night. He is making it to, uh, last night he was just outside St. Louis, Missouri, uh, meeting with his brother. And he's got another day of traveling today. He's gonna to be parking at a truck stop just outside of Atlanta until I get there and can figure out uh, his route into the convention center and where we'll be unloading him. And so uh, we'll see how it goes. currently 11:40 at night um, just ordered me some DoorDash food because nothing's open and with all the airport stuff I wasn't able to get any food so I'm feeling a little sick but anyway um, kind of some good news and bad news grandpa made it um, within probably 20 minutes of the convention center but uh, we weren't getting the information that we were looking for for a truck route into the convention center and uh, downtown Atlanta is pretty uh, not trek friendly so we kind of only have one shot at getting in there and uh, we couldn't get the information soon enough and so I rerouted him to uh, Lincoln Electric's Atlanta training facility which is only about uh, 20 minutes away from the convention center so I called them up and uh, reached out to some of the contacts I have there and they were able to get him lodged up there for the night uh, he's sleeping in his sleeper there uh, luckily he had some leftover dinner from the day before in his fridge and his sleeper and so he's got dinner he's safe he's good um, I'm going to wake up first thing in the morning and go to the convention center and try to figure out the information on how to get him in there and get him unloaded so he can uh, get out of here as soon as he can and as safe as he can um, it was a good traveling day it's a long day in the airport my flight got delayed a little bit but not bad um, it was a direct flight from Salt Lake City to Atlanta just a just a long day it's kind of stressful I was worried about getting him in in the right place but uh, all's well I'm safe he's safe uh, looks like my dinner's gonna be here in about 20 minutes I'm gonna chat on it and get some rest and uh, fight tomorrow's battles so keep watching the channel I appreciate your guys support and uh, I'll take you along my adventure tomorrow all right, everybody, it's uh, Saturday morning. Got a good night's rest last night. Got in from the airport a little late, but uh, I'm walking to the convention center at the moment. I'm walking right downtown Atlanta, Georgia. 
they sent me a truck route this morning that's kind of just getting them to the convention center it doesn't really help on where he's gonna be unloaded so I'm gonna walk out there right now and see where I will be unloading him directly they've got about every street blocked off so I'm getting a little nervous on how in the hell he's gonna get in here this might be a little bit of a, a mess we'll see okay so I got here where the welding competitions are I'm waiting for an individual that's coming to help me figure out right the right where the truck needs to come in and get unloaded. Uh, we'll see how that goes. It's kind of a cool story as I'm waiting for that guy to come here to show me where to unload the truck. Um, years ago when I was competing, um, my, mace, my welding instructor, Mason Winters, uh, and I, early on, when we won the U.S. Weld Trials and I was a U.S. representative for uh, World Skills, they sent us uh, some fume extractors and whatnot, and uh, why we had them, they had a big problem with their pallets falling apart. And so they shipped all the pallets to us um, to come up with a design to help them kind of stay together and hold because these pallets are uh, really specific for these fume extractors. And this is probably six years later and uh, they're still holding up just like we put them on and so I kind of wanted to show you guys so we put those end caps on each end and that tied all the pieces together that way they kind of it was stronger because everything was kind of held together at the ends and then we had brackets and pieces screwed on there some stops for the wheels but it's kind of cool to look at your product six years down the road and still see it doing what it's supposed to. Um, it's pretty, I think that's pretty cool. So. Okay, we've got a plan. Will it work? I don't know. It's our only option. I'm a little, I don't know what to say. I'm a little irritated that I've got my grandpa in this situation. They told me it would be a lot different than this, but uh, this is the intersection I'm meeting him at. We're in downtown Atlanta on the corner of Baker and Marriott Street. If he, he's gotta make this turn coming into this area and that's where I'll meet him. Hopefully the traffic's a little slower and we'll get him around the corner and get him into the convention center. And we are going to back right in it and drive right into the convention center to unload him. So I'm going to try to get some footage of it, but it's going to be a little stressful. So I might not be able to use the camera much, but we'll see what I can do. There he is. That'll make you sweat. Yeah. All right. So there's a bay door here to the left. We're gonna back in. So if you just want to pull, to kind of straighten out. We survived. We're gonna be backing in right there. We defeated the odds. Okay, we got him in. We got him unloaded. Um, feel bad, I kinda got him in a rough spot here, but we'll get him out of here, it's gonna work out. Um, I backed him right inside the convention center. Just check this out. So 
So the welding and the welding fab competitions and the welding sculpture, there are these three, booth, three booths here. So looked like our load held up good. We had a couple tears in the tarp that let a little bit of water in, but nothing, nothing too bad. But uh, yeah, we're here. The material's good. Um, Grandpa's good. He's a, he's a little shaken up, but if anyone can do it, it's him. So we'll get him out of here safe. Okay, everybody. So yesterday we got the truck unloaded and uh, kind of sorted some pallets around and then uh, kind of got cozied into the hotel, kind of relaxed a little bit, waited for some more people to show up, uh, kind of took an easy day, kind of relaxed now that all the material's here. But uh, now this is where my role for Lincoln Electric uh, comes in and that's where I'm gonna be setting up all the equipment for uh, the two competitions, welding and welding fab. Um, but right now we're setting up the welding competition area. We're setting up laying out all the unistrut for all the different booths and uh, so we can hang welding curtains and then I'll bring in the Lincoln welders in front of the booths and start getting them all set up, get all the leads on them, get the regulators, get the bottles hooked up and everything. Um, we've got to still put out all the, the, the weld tables and the welding arms and the oxy fuel torches and so right now this is where a lot of work happens getting these competitions set up that a lot of people uh, kind of don't get to see and don't realize how much work and uh, how much people have to do to get something like this set up so I will try to video some of the process of us working today we'll be doing the same stuff tomorrow and the next day and uh, I want to say competitors start showing up Tuesday, Monday night, Tuesday. Um, I want to say there's a opening ceremony maybe Tuesday. Uh, don't quote me on that, but uh, yeah, follow along and show you how this gets set up. productive day I've got almost all of the Lincoln equipment set up for the welding competition I've got the machine set up I've got the bottle the regulator the gas lines all tight I've um, got a couple little things to do tomorrow but uh, get them all I need to get them all in a nice straight line but it's a good day I have 18 18 pieces of equipment here for Lincoln, 20, 28 in the welding and fab competition. Uh, but we got all the booths set up, got all the tables out, got all the arms up, got all the curtains. Let me go show you. And so this morning was just nothing but a pile of pallets. We organized the pallets, got everything out of them and got everything set up and I uh, was able to get all of this done in one day but 
It's kind of an interesting bottle setup Miller's got going on here. You guys ever seen bottles sit at an angle like that? I haven't. I have today. But they've got some some hoses and regulators and stuff to put on and they'll be ready to go tomorrow. So looks like we're gonna call it a day. Uh, it's Father's Day. Kinda hard being here. Just had my first girl, Lola. She's about six weeks old and missed my first father days father day with her which is today which i'm a little bummed about i'd much rather be cuddling her but uh sometimes you got to do what you got to do so anyway i'm gonna grab my stuff and head for the hotel okay everybody i cannot remember what day this is but uh i'm starting back here at the competition center um i've got to finish up all these lincoln machines the electricians have been bringing some wire down to get them wired up today um, I gotta finish the regulators and the gas hoses and then I gotta get some TIG torches and some foot pedals on them and uh, get them on a nice straight line and looking good all cleaned up and whatnot so that's the main task for today then we'll start uh, working on some welder made material getting it laid out and we'll go from there all right Another good day down. It's been really hectic. I probably haven't done as much videoing as I would like. But uh, I'm pretty much set up on this side. Um, I'll kind of take you a tour through the booths and whatnot. But uh, the only thing I need to do is pull a string line and get these welders perfectly straight. But we're gonna have a bunch of electricians coming in and wiring all these welders up and so It'd be a waste of my time because I guarantee they're going to be moved around with electricians bumping them and stuff. So I'm going to wait on that until right before showtime. I'll pull a string line and make sure all these welders are absolutely straight. But uh, for myself, that's a lot of welders to put together. But we did it. I had some help here and there from some good friends. I appreciate that. Uh, shout out to Andrew Carden. For, uh, helping me when he didn't have to but uh, this is kind of the booth set up here so got a chair this is kind of a just kind of a mess right now but got the foot pedal uh, filler wire holder rests positioners fume extraction system with the mini flex from Lincoln Electric um, tables from Miller Electric and uh, some curtains that are built for welding arcs some absolute blind curtains because on this side they're gonna be doing their their TIG and their stick processes, but on the other side, they're seeing they're going to be doing MIG and flux core, and we don't want them to be able to look through and see what's going on on the other side. So, the curtain in the middle is a complete blackout curtain; they can't see through. But here, side to side, um, there's no information that we're withholding from people during the competition because they all have the same set of prints in these booths. If that makes sense. And so we have 16 booths for one side. Well, we have 18, but we're only going to fill 16. So I did 18 welders, set them up completely from scratch from the crate. Um, but that's done. And as you can see, kind of all around here is starting to come together good. So over there is going to be a uh, metal sculpture. Uh, I'll be showing you all of the projects there when it gets to that point. But I'm going to walk you over here and, and uh, show you the, the other side of the competition. The booths are the same, but this is the equipment on the other side is um, the Miller side, and they've got the what are they? Millermatic 225s. So you can see here, they've got the same amount of welders here. It leads strung out because once the electricians get the power up, we're going to do all of our test welds, make sure all the welders are working correctly, and then we'll factor or reset them for the competitors to come in. But earlier, I kind of mentioned how it was weird that these bottles were at an angle. And so I talked to some of the high ups at Miller and figured out that that, since these machines are getting smaller and smaller on these carts, that they're starting to get top heavy and tilt and lean. And so they're leaning the bottles, they're, they're doing their cart design to um, change the center of gravity with that bottle's tilt. That way, um, they don't tip over backwards when the bottle's full 
on there. So I thought that was kind of a, a unique thing. It's pretty cool to know. But uh, it's kind of a mess right now because we've all been setting up. But uh, it's coming good. So let me show you. Over here is all of the oxy fuel. We got Smith torches and uh, Smith regulators. Got the cutting tables and the drop to catch the slag so we don't ruin their concrete. And then welding and fab is getting set up over there. So we've all been working hard. It's a big difference from day one because everyone's here. We got the Lincoln booth set up over here with all the little vertex machines. Just uh, three days ago, we had a semi parked right there. So fine. Stuff's starting to come together. Before long, there's going to be carpet on all this floor. And uh, this place is going to be a lot different. But, uh, yeah, we've got a fun top golf evening planned. Since we're all kind of, a lot of our work is done, we're going to go kind of hang out tonight at Top Golf and um, come up and tomorrow and finish a couple things. Nothing too major. So that's kind of an update. Things are going just fine. Uh, this is the first year that Skills USA Nationals is in Atlanta. Before it was in Louisville, Kentucky. And so there's a lot of new going on. The booth setups aren't the same. Our space isn't the same. We have a little bit different booth layout. And so there's been kind of a, a situation where we're all figuring out what to do with what. And that only happens every five years. It's like a five year cycle. So uh, tomorrow I'm gonna be setting up our Weather Made projects. And uh, we'll go from there.